Good evening everyone. I have a little bit of extra time so I'm going to keep making tutorials tonight. So the next tutorial is going to be tutorial number six, texture mapping, which is kind of neat. What we're going to do is we're going to take this cube from tutorial number five and instead of coloring each of the vertices, we're going to sample some sort of texture. We sample this texture by using something called UV mapping. And UV mapping actually isn't difficult at all. What it is is it's a way to sort of point each vertex to some location on a texture. So what we do is we map the texture to between the values of 0 and 1. So the bottom left hand corner of the texture will have coordinates 0, 0. The very top right hand corner will have the coordinates 1 and 1. And then as you move all throughout that texture, it has values varying between 0 and 1. So now each vertex will have a UV coordinate supplied to it, and that UV coordinate will tell each vertex how to map onto that texture. So it's really just a mapping of vertices to a two-dimensional texture object. And this allows you to do really, really neat things like applying some sort of skin, eye, and character mesh or character texture onto a mesh. And that makes it look a lot more realistic. So we're going to do that today. And to do that, I'm going to fire up OpenGL tutorial number six here. So what I've done is I've just copied OpenGL tutorial number five, and I've gone and put it into this new project tutorial number six. And one of the first things we'll need is some sort of texture to actually apply to our cube. So you can head on to Google and download any texture you want. I've got a texture that I just found on the web somewhere, and it's this crate here. And like I said before, this bottom left-hand corner will be location 00, zero UV coordinates, and the top right-hand corner will be location 1, 1. And as you move along here, you'd see your X value increasing from 0 to 1, and then your Y value increasing from 0 to 1, and so on and so forth. So really simple to do and uh, to make it so that I don't have to keep copying all this stuff into my executable directory I've made a little bit of a trick here in my OpenGL tutorial number six properties I'm going to add a build event here so that every time my project builds it automatically copies all of my lives folder and my data folder right into my target directory which is where my executable is so you can check that out it's on github Otherwise, you can see that code there. If you don't want to use this, you can always just copy paste create.jpg into your binary directory. So we'll go and compile that, and create.jpg should now be in my executable directory. And we'll do a little bit of cleanup here. Let's remove the pyramid from use because we're not going to be using it at all in this project. Let's go and get rid of all those dispose methods. And we'll also get rid of drawing it. And because we're only drawing the cube now, we can also remove its translation since we want to draw it in the center. So there we go, we've got our cube being drawn now, we just have to texture it. All right, there's a few steps. So the first step is probably just loading the texture. So let's do that. We're going to load our crate texture. And this is really easy to do in the OpenGL 4 C Sharp library. All you have to do is you have to create, so I have to actually create some sort of texture object. And I'm going to call this my create texture. My create texture is going to be equal to new texture, and all I have to do is supply the file name here. Now, since my crate's been moved into my executable directory, I just have to supply the name create.jpg. And now, when I actually go to render my cube, I want to bind that create texture right before I draw it. So here, I'm going to go and bind the texture, and I'm going to supply create texture there. So now I've already loaded up my texture, I've bound it. Now there's one thing you'll notice when we go to hit build on here. We've got a little bit of a problem here because texture requires that system.drawing.bitmap is available. So we have to add a reference here. So let's go and add a reference and we're gonna be adding drawing, system.drawing. All right, so now the project builds no problem. So if we run it, you can see still nothing's going on. What's going on with that? Well, we haven't updated the shader and we haven't supplied UV coordinates yet. So let's do both of those. The first thing I'll do is I'll update this vertex shader a little bit. So we're not going to be using this vertex color. Instead, we're going to be supplying some sort of vertex UV. And the vertex UV is two dimensional, so it's only a VEC2. Similarly, we're going to change that from color to UV and update this guy here to be vertex UV. That's everything we need to do for the vertex shader. Really, it just takes the input vertex UV and outputs some sort of UV value. Now the fragment shader is a little bit more difficult. We have to go and modify the same effect too to UV. And somehow we have to do something here that samples that texture. Well, to sample that texture, we need a sampler. So I need some sort of sampler 2D, and I'm going to call this texture. 
So now to determine our fragment color, we're going to sample that texture using a function called texture2d. Texture2d takes two things. The first thing it takes is the sampler to use, which is texture, our sampler up here, and then some UV coordinates. Now those UV coordinates have been supplied by our, by our vertex shader. So I think that's really all there is to it. Now every time that a fragment's drawn, it's going to go and sample that texture at some point between 0, 0 and 1, 1. Now we need to supply those UV coordinates. So we need to supply UV coordinate for every vertex. And that means that we need to replace this code here, this cube color with something. So let's go and remove cube color here and just change it into cube UV. So cube UV is going to be a VBO containing a bunch of vector twos. All right, so let's go and do this. Cube UV is some new VBO containing vector twos. And let's get our vector two array together. All right, now this is kind of an interesting one. Each cube is rendered of six faces that are all quads. And since we want to just apply that texture to each face in the same manner, we're just going to repeat the exact same code six times because we're gonna do the same thing for each face. And each face is going to contain the entire texture. So we're gonna go from zero, zero, all the way up to one, one. So we'll do that by moving first across the x-axis and then back across the y-axis here. So we're going to be at zero and one. And we'll just repeat this for a total of six times. All right, that's all there is to it. So now cube UV is containing all of those UV coordinates that map each of these vertices to some point on that texture. Now we need to take care of disposing that cube UV. And don't forget that we also have to dispose cube texture. All right. Now we just have to take care of this bind buffer to shader attribute. We're gonna change this to be cube UV, and this will be the vertex UV. And remember, this is just the name of that vertex attribute here. So let's compile it and see what we get. We'll run the program and check that out. We're now loading that crate texture in. We've supplied UV coordinates for every single one of these vertices, and now we're sampling that texture and drawing it on the screen. So pretty easy to do and definitely looks very visually appealing. So that's it for this tutorial. It's going to be available on GitHub. Actually, it already is available on GitHub. And remember that if you want to go ahead on the lessons, I do have a lot of tutorials posted on there. So I hope that this was interesting. And the next tutorial I think is going to be on lighting and keyboard control and a few other things. So definitely stay tuned. I'll try and get that out tonight as well. And as always, happy